and so what's uh, what's in, involved here is is incorporating the flam. Now, if you look at Spivak's library, after the flamadiddle, he talks. <laughs> and he put it in that order because he's Marie Spivak. And the chronology that he created, that Dick Wilson created, quite brilliant. And, and that's what Marie says to Louis Belson in that wonderful video, is that by thinking about playing snare drum <clears throat> using this technique and the seven basic strokes, it makes the whole thing much, much simpler. Right? It's just a matter of learning these basic strokes and how to combine them. Right? <clears throat> now, so <clears throat> what, what we have is we have now the introduction of, of flams and strokes. And, and so at this point, after the flamadiddle, he, even though I know we've talked about the flam, why don't we just take a quick look at it? Let's take a quick look at the, at the open flam just to, to reacquaint ourselves with this, this principle, uh, what is one of the seven basic strokes, which is the appoggiatura. And, and then as well, you have, <clears throat> when we're playing a, a, a flam, we typically, uh, remember a flam is one hand high, the other hand low. <clears throat> so we're going to raise to, to play the, the core note. So it, if it's a right flam, that means that the left plays the appoggiatura. Okay, let's just take a look at, at right flams. See how that looks. Now, now, you want me to play that open now, so that, so I get this sense that that, that appoggiatura is going to come somewhat before the main note. Well, have like a palum, like the, the, way Mur, the way Murray described it in the video, that kind of that palum sound, palum. <laughs> that made a lot of sense to me in, in playing an open. Palum. But right, right now, let's just see if we can play a flam at all, okay. let alone okay. control the space between the appoggiatura and the main note. If I get my left word. Okay, it's just these motions that we're making. Go for it. You want you want me to um you don't want me to. to... Just close it and speed it up that way, do you? Yeah, go, go ahead and play the left. <clears throat> okay. A left plan. Right, see a Torah. Okay, and what if you were to go both ways? <clears throat> It's, imp it's important before we move on to the next stroke <clears throat> that we that we consider the elements involved with regards to playing these, to, to playing alternating flams or to play a flam. What happens is it turns into what is another one of the seven basic strokes. Remember, Murray thought an up one of the seven basic strokes is an upstroke. Another is a downstroke. He thought that going from a an upstroke to a downstroke was so important, he named it one stroke, the single stroke, right? So that's what starts to happen as we're, as, as we're speeding this up, it, be, it really becomes a single stroke. Okay? Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It 
starts to just become an up to a down. And so what we need to help you begin to really realize is that we don't wait here. You have this propensity to wait here, but it doesn't. It waits here at the floor. See, this is, this is where I'm waiting. Okay. We're getting this down so the one inch death, the one inch death punch. Right. <laughs> solid strike with minimal effort. We're not using arm. We're leading with the wrist. The arm can just relax and it becomes what is ultimately as Richard Martinez calls this whole thing. It's it's all just a wrist turn. OK, so to get that, <clears throat> we need to learn. Oh, it's really all about. OK. So. We're waiting here. Right? And, and then we're moving upward and then we go the other way and then we wait here at the floor at, at parallel. We wait here. We wait here. We want to make an up. We do. We were so close to the surface that we can't almost can't help but make a note. And so we're just here. See, it goes up, down. It waits here. It waits at the floor. It doesn't wait here. So all I want you to do is just make a downstroke for me. See if you can make a downstroke. It doesn't wait at the top, but that waits here at the floor. That. So what can I do to not wait at the top? Copy my timing up, down, two, three, up, down, two, three, up, down, two, three, up, down. That's where you wait. Three, up, down, two, three, up, down. Now, let's just take a look at this part of the throw. <clears throat> We're back to the, the throw, but it's so important. I mean, just to move on willy nilly, it would seem. Uh, if we don't really take care of what it, this apparent seeming, what is seemingly minutia is the whole thing. That was Dick. The subtle, Kevin, the subtlety is everything. Okay. So, First of all, let's let's look at the grip again because the grip just is looking as though it it needs some consideration. Okay, so I'm just letting the stick rest in my middle finger and on the palm. The palm, in a sense, is countervailing, right? Or the stick would the stick would do this. So the palm is countervailing. You can feel the weight of the stick. Wanting to fall forward, but the butt end is resting on the palm, so it doesn't. All right, so we have that. And now we're just going to bring the thumb and first finger in. Yeah, just like that. It's, it's not too tight. Go ahead, go ahead and do this. You yeah, see how the stick seems to want to move through this channel? There's like a channel here. Okay, isn't there? See, and now it's perfect because it looks right because your middle finger is tucked under the stick, right? Formed, formed this little cradle for the stick and now it's been moved away, but it's still under the stick. The, the ring finger is more elongated because the butt end is moving away so that <clears throat> this part of the stick furthest away from your thumb and first finger is towards the butt end, you know, until you can no longer hold it in your hand if you kept going, see? But but the first thumb and first finger still have it. 
right? So the hand is going to the right. Okay, so so it's going to travel through that track and do that. Do that again. Now you see. So your ring finger has had to. It just naturally. If I didn't mention it, you wouldn't notice it. Your ring finger is straight out because it's still sit on the stick, and even your baby finger. The tip of the baby finger is on the stick, right? Let it fall back down in. There. See, now your grip looks much better. We know that we need to have the grip act in a certain way relative to the motion of the stick, right? We know that the stick has the potential to travel in this direction. It's what Richard Martinez calls there's a path of least resistance. There's a path of least resistance. The stick is always moving straight up and down. Okay. And so the grip will uh, form a kind of a contour that makes that, that possible, that allows for the stick to move in the hand in a certain way. Okay, really, it's just laying in the hand. Go ahead and just let it lay in your hand. You might want to slightly roll over. No, first finger as well. You might want to slightly, just slightly roll over into half turned over. Yeah, I can almost keep your palm down. Almost. See? Yeah, put your thumb on. Okay, see if, see if that track exists. Go ahead and do that again. That was cool. Yeah, you see that looks good. Let, let the stick come back down and let the hand close in around it. <clears throat> kind of just following the stick, right? That's part of this gig. It's like we're always following the stick, right? Okay, it looks much better. Now, now all you're all you're going to do is keep the bead in one place and and bend your wrist or turn your wrist. You see, it's really all a wrist turn. So go ahead and turn your wrist and see if you can go up. Not too bad. Can you come up a little more? A little more? Come on, let your elbow hang. Let your elbow hang. Doesn't see, just let, yeah, there you go. Come back down, feel the, feel the whole thing uncoil, and the elbow will come in ever so slightly. Do that again. Go on up. There you go, just like that, not too much. Now, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our wrists like a regular wrist turn. We're gonna go boom. Not bad. Try, try, try just turning your wrist for a minute. Just turn your wrist. Okay, stop. Now go on up again, your proper grip. Let the elbow hang, let the elbow hang. Okay, now you remember that feeling of just doing this? It's as if, pretend you didn't even go up, pretend you're just down here and you're just gonna turn your wrist and lo and behold, the whole thing will collapse with you, maybe not even know. Okay, go on up again, up, down. That's better. Make a little note on the way up. Up. And make your throw. Now, what I don't want you to do is wait at the top. So we're going note, up, down. And we're going, giving it a count of two, three. Up, down. Two, three, let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay. So if you keep time, try this to help your timing. If you actually count time, keep time, <clears throat> the up will be on the one, the down will be on the two, and you'll be waiting at the floor for three and four. Go for it. That rhymes. <laughs> you'll be waiting at the floor for three and four. <laughs> Got to count. Better. Count out loud. Two, three, four. One, two, Don't three. Your, the elbow probably wouldn't move that. Look how little it two, is. But it does. But a tiny. One, there you two, go. Three, 
Point your first finger. It's not bad. Your grip is much better. Yeah, see, go ahead and, and run run the stick through that track again. See, see how when you do that, it pulls against the tip of the first finger. Now, now let the stick. Didn't it a little? See, see, if you were pointing it, maybe it wouldn't pull against that tip. And now, now let the stick collapse back into your split. The other hand, bring the stick back down. Now, with the other hand. Bring it down and let the hand close in around it. See your first fingers are pointed. So it shouldn't be pointed when you do when you do this. Watch. Three, four, one, two, three, four. There you go. Good grip. You don't need to come up into a gooseneck. We don't want to make it tight. Just enough. Just come here. You should feel you should feel very little. There's nothing to do. Don't come up quite so high. Nice and easy. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three. Now you do that in the other hand. <clears throat> See that in your left. One, two. Play. Three. Check to see if, if, the, if the hand is in the right condition to allow that stick to follow through that track that we talked about. Good. Now, now bring it down. Bring the stick down with your right hand. And I have to hold on to it. No, you have to hold it. It'll just want to collapse too fast. If I do that, it wants to, it'll just fall in. Yeah, I want to. I want to just bring it down. You have to literally bring it down with both hands. So feel what I'm feeling. No, 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 no. If you push it, no. See, mine wouldn't do that. You're doing something weird. Watch. Okay. Watch. Watch what happens, Joe. If I do it your way. Okay, so we have this. I guess I don't know. You're doing it like this. I turn my wrist. Uh, I guess. I guess we wouldn't. We try not to turn our wrists. We're just just feeling how the stick travels through this this channel. Okay. Okay. So it's like this, right? If I do this, watch. Boop. It falls into my palm, which is correct. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to. I want you to have the stick follow that through that make a motion that travels th through that channel, so to speak. Now you're going to have to bring it down so it doesn't just fall into the palm. We're bringing it down. And we're just going to let the fingers feel what it's like to close in around that stick, so to speak, close, I guess. Yeah, you don't have to do anything weird with your back fingers. It's not bad. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to just make, make that tap. Three, four. One, two, 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 three, four. Now look, now look, you're doing this, Joe. Joe. You might be able to find a way to slightly cheat. And still be counting and make the stroke apparently in time. But it doesn't go like this. One. It doesn't go one, two. It goes one, two. One, two, three. See how it keeps going? One, two. One, two. All the way through. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost singing, singing the counting. One. Uh, not, not one, two. See, it's... I, one, two, it's smooth. Go for it. One, two, oh, and then it went. Three, one, two, 
It's a two, it goes here. No, nope. you, you waited up here. You went one. It's got to be one, two. One, two. Come on up a little more slowly. Don't rush the one. And two. Drop. One, Don't drop the ceiling. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Go oh, no more slowly, more smoothly. One. Come down to your speed, but go up more slowly. Okay. One, two, three, four. One. Uh oh, you froze. Grip looks good though. When you look back, you'll see everything looks pretty good. Now, now, the universe, your computer is playing a mean, a mean trick. It's freezing while you're at the top, but I don't think you're waiting at the top. So try it again. Oh. Watch your grip now, because look. Remember the subtlety is everything? Right, you fixed it. Your fingers start at the point, so it's almost like you need to revisit this again. You need to revisit this. Grab both sides of that stick. Okay, and bring it down and let the hand close in or on around it. Bring it down. There, there's your grip. Don't change anything. Leave the baby finger. See how your space between the thumb and first finger is smaller than it just was a minute ago? 30 seconds. A little smaller. It started to change. Keep it there. Now we're going to go watch. Nice and smooth. One, two. two three, four, one, two. Three. If you don't turn the upstroke to the ceiling, when this is going, when we're making one of those those pure Murray Spivak single strokes, we're just letting the stick drop. Remember, you're so close to the surface, you watch, it just goes one, it just drops. One, two. One, oh, you lift it up towards two. I just want you to drop the beat. One, there you go. No, but go slowly. One, one two, three, four, four. one. Okay, space in your thumb. You've lost your first finger and thumb. They don't need to change. It's, the stick can still travel through that channel. Just leave it there. Now go make just bend forward and go up slowly. One, two, three. Here's not your hand. Just do just do this for me, Joe. Just just touch the surface. Just touch the surface. Just touch it. Leave it there. Uh, yeah, just touch it and leave it there. There, look, you promised you're already going up. See how much more do you have to go up? One, watch. If you really just just touch the surface, one. Look, I'm hardly going up anymore. One, two. Try it. Have to be touch. It's just a little half an inch. One, watch. One, just do that. No, you lifted it up first. One. There you go. Let's go up a little more while you finish saying one. One. Just a little more pronation. And then, yeah, there. Now go the other way. There. Just tiny little tap and a slow count. A smooth, long, slow count on one. One. There. Two. Go on up. Tiny look and forward. Two. Watch. It'll give you better timing if if you if you really become conscious, alert when it comes to, or what if you be, can be more present with regards to one, 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 big one. I'm almost up. One, two. Watch how much little more I bend. I go one and a tiny more bend. One. Try it. Just go. Just do the one. 
but you have to be you lift it up you weren't present this is like that deep meditation we were talking about earlier no watch if you get your first no you have to make a note watch one right one just do that I can't lift that was better touch one one now, here's how much more you're going to go up. A quarter of an inch. Yeah, that's it. Even too much. Now you can go the other way. Right again. One, two, three. See, so you put the two together now. Right? See, if, no metronome. We can just see if we can start to get not waiting at the top. and easy. See if you can look at your pointing your finger in the right. Don't do that. Remember, I bend forward. You have the discipline in the left. Turn to the ceiling to just bend forward. And just bend forward. It'll give you a better timing on your up. It'll wait up. And forward. Don't point your finger. You're losing that channel. You're changing your grip instead of knowing the grip was correct to begin. See if you can concentrate. Really focus on not turning to the ceiling for the appoggiatura. Okay. You'll come back in a minute. You go. Oh, you turn to the ceiling. In the right. No, in the right. You're turning to the ceiling for the vajatora. It just bends four. No, it bends a half an inch. You're turning. Okay. There. That's where it bends forward a half an inch. Don't change your first finger and thumb. You're losing your channel. Yeah. Come back down to the floor in the right and make that first little note. After you make a little note, it comes up like another sixteenth of an inch, quarter of an inch. Think thick sixteen, and it'll get you there. Right? So remember, if if you're making an appoggiatura in in the uh, in, that means you're going as you now you're thinking about you're making the appoggiatura on the right and the downstroke on the left. It's it, you're you're see what the right is doing. It's going just bending forward. Just bends forward, just bends forward, just bends forward, just bends forward. I'm trying. See? Have the discipline. See? So it's just doing this. See? Bends forward. There you go. That's better. There. See, the bending forward, you can ignore it, but it'll help you right now. To ignore it is to defeat your ability to get this more quickly. It seems like so little, right? I know it used to bug me. It's like, what do you mean I can't turn to the ceiling? What, 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 what do you mean I can't do the turn to the Well, later on, we will be able to turn to the ceiling. But for this, Mary made a big deal out about this. You see him teaching Louis Belson of all people. I mean, Louis Belson teaching Louis this very thing starts off the video. You're just going to bend forward and you're so close to the surface you can't help but, but touch the surface and now you're going to follow it up. He does the whole, it goes through the whole thing. 
He doesn't start off by going, Louis, I want you to go like this and then go up. No, he has him bend forward to go up. Right. No, you don't go like this. Remember, after you get your note, it's a quarter of an inch. That's all. But you take your time to get the first note. No, you lift it up. So you spoiled it. It's a smooth little turn, and it'll help you with your timing. It's a tiny, gentle, there, you're up. And you just want up a tiny more, now you go the other way. You're done. So, That's the hard part. So how, how high should I come up to, to, to finish the stroke? need you to even think about that right now. If you can just get this, and you just turn your wrist. Turn your wrist, I don't know. You'll feel, you'll feel your way. But it's a smooth thing. All you doing is turning your wrist. I don't know. I don't know how much. You'll have to figure that out. You're just turning your wrist. You're turning your wrist. We can make a small throw. We can make a small throw. Make a small throw. Feel your way. It's this part that you need to concentrate on. See? You took yourself away from what is the primary consideration right now. See? We do that as students. Trust me. I get it. But... Do, you introduced another question that isn't important right now. Dick would say, down is the easy part. Well, if you can get the up, down will take care of itself. So trust in that. What you can't seem to do consistently is just go one, two. It'll guide you. Watch how slow my turn is. Watch. It's very slow. Go turn, turn. Uh, turn. It just turn. Watch. It starts the whole thing going up. Turn. Turn. No. It's just a little turn. See, I made it my note. Note. Say note. Note. You went note. I just want you to go note. We're not doing the whole up. Just the first part of it. Note. 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 No. No. Watch. Note. It would come up this much. Watch. Note. Watch. Note. Note. No, you came up. Look how much you came up. Look, look how little I've come up. Note. I've moved about. My wrist has gone up about that much. Good. About probably as much as my bead has gone down. No. There. 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 Come back down. Don't finish going up. You could follow that up more. Do it again. Note. Way too much. It went no real long. It's just watch. This time I told you to come up slowly and say a long one. Now we're doing something different. We're going note. How little it moves. That's it. Don't say no too long. Make it a short note or a staccato. Note. That's it. That's beautiful. Now just bend a bend another sixteenth of an inch, leaving the bead there. Just bend another sixteenth. There it is. You've gone up. Now go the other way. Just make a big wrist turn. Yeah, much better. Do that again. No. Oh, make a short staccato. Make, remember, now we've now we've really broken this thing down. Now we have another step to consider because I think it's helping you. Right? Now we have note, and then it's going to bend a little more. And then you can, no. no, no, the first note is real short, note. So it's only going to move that much. Note. No, make the note more staccato. So just say note. Note. Don't you hear it? Listen, 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 watch. Note, watch, note, watch. Okay. Note, note. Once I've made my note, I won't move anymore. Don't move anymore. Yeah. Note. Not bad. You lift it a little. Now just bend a tiny bit more. And a tiny bit more with the wrist. There, now you can go the other way. Good. Do it again. Note is short, staccato. Because the note. note. There you go. And kind of go, yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, that's much better. Do that once for me in the left, where we break the up into two sections the okay. auto note, and then you're going to follow it up a little more. Note. Don't lift up. Nope. See, you went like this. No. 
No, it's watch. Go tiny. Go. There you go. Not bad. Now try, try, try to, to not lift to the ceiling for your tiny, quick little staccato note. No. Too much. Too much. We're going to go up in two stages, and you're not going to come down. Just the up. Okay. No. No, too big. Don't you hear it? Listen, you're supposed to sound like, watch. No. Note. Note. Don't you hear? Note. I've made my note. Note. Once, once you tapped, stop. No, I don't want you to. I just wanted you to hear it. You can hear. I can, can't you hear it? Listen. Nope. Can you hear it? There it is. That's it. That's it. Now bend a little bit more. There. Now you can throw. That's much better. Okay. Now let's take a look at this stroke. Okay. <clears throat> We're looking at <clears throat> the flam accent number two. Okay. It's heavy. <laughs> Coming along, see that's all. The, that's all the, the flam accent number two is. Okay, so let's review. What motions are we going to use? First of all, <clears throat> we're in six eight, right? It's going to start with a right flam. What we've just been working on, right? So we're, we've got ah, uh, right flam which is a quarter note, so we also have to pay attention to the rhythm. And then we have an eighth note, right turn. A little wrist turn, right? We have a, a little right wrist turn. And then another little right wrist turn, which will be the appoggiatura for the left. And then it works conversely with the left. In other words, the left will make the downstroke with a, a right appoggiatura, then a little tap, and then another left. So, you can see, we have three notes in each hand. Let me see. Ah, 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 simple time with a flam. I mean, there's all kinds of creative stuff we can do so that we're not just going dang, dang, g'dang in any old way in other words, without knowing what we're doing. Okay, we know what we're doing. We're playing a downstroke in the right with a motion, right? Downstroke implies that there's a motion or a throw. And then we have a little wrist turn and then we have another little wrist turn. So it's as if uh, and remember, now we're going to wait down. We, we don't wait here. We're just coming up, waiting down, 
and then we have two notes that eventually as it speeds up start to become will approach becoming rebounds see where this is going okay right now we're not, we're not there okay <clears throat> oh and and by the way um I, it probably my mistake not not to have given you a not to have given you a metronome marking for flams because we're going to review the flams so i'll give you those markings but yeah. perhaps and 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 you're going to you're going to use that exercise that we discussed where you practice just going one way with a downstroke which isn't even a flam right we're just going one two three up down so we're working on a single stroke that will become right and and perhaps and perhaps we don't need a metronome maybe it's helpful just to allow your mind yes to have to keep track of the metronome but just to count yourself and then perhaps we'll also have you do that other approach to helping you get the timing of this motion to glue the up remember the down kind of takes care of itself yeah and, and so all we're going to be doing is that staccato up like note you're going to bend a little more and make your throw yeah. nope. okay so i'll give you those I'll, I'll write those out for you yeah write those out yeah let's get back now to flam accent number number two so we have we have a downstroke a little wrist turn and another little wrist turn just in the right don't point your first finger in the right remind yourself of the channel mm -hmm. let's go back to that that channel This is kind of like Richard Mart. Richard Martinez talks about the channel. I don't, don't remember him ever doing this to help me identify a grip, but it seems to be effective because your grip is much better. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a throw in the right. All right, a little bit, and then we're going to make a little tap. And then another tap. We'll be doing the same thing. Okay, go ahead. Do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, left hand. You want me to do that in the left hand? Yeah, do that in the left hand. Up, stop. You see, we're just gonna every time you come back to see me, I'm gonna be busting you. Oh, that's cool. I, <laughs> well, because otherwise I'm not doing my job. I'm just. Well, I'm, I'm just really, I, I, I'm just helping you feel better about yourself, but it ultimately won't help you feel better about yourself because you'll be wondering how to play. So much better grip. You see, now you have that channel that we talked about. Okay, now all you're going to do is make a, a throw. Remember how smooth that little up is. And then, yeah, good. Now you're going to throw, right? Now turn it, there you go. And then a tap and another tap. And that's what's happening in both hands. So go ahead and just without a metronome, go ahead and uh, and count it in six, and and find a tempo that's comfortable for you. See, so maintain those motions. Two. Two, three. Two. No, not playing the stroke, Joe. Oh. It's it's a downstroke in the right. Don't lose your grips in both hands while you're searching intellectually. Go ahead and make the make the throw in the right with a, with a with a flame. A left a left appoggiatura. One, two, and then it's a right. Okay, so one, two, and three is a right. Three, and that's going to make a tap. And four is going to be in the left as a downstroke. Okay. Then that four, five. Then six is going to be in the left. Yeah. And then there's going to be another little tap in the left. Remember the second one. Yeah, I'm just wondering when. So. Two. Don't forget to count. It'll help you. It'll be. 
It will give you earmarks. To right, okay. That's a left. Three, one. There you go. <coughs> okay. One, two, three. Oops. Three. One. Hmm. Okay. One, two, three. Just, just to help you get this in your body and and, and quite kind of create a, a split screen cerebral, cerebrally, uh, go ahead and put your left on your calf. On your calf, so your arm is hanging, because we're always looking to get that arm to hang. So if we have a chance to play oh. silently, we would want to do it down on our calf. Okay. Your arm is extended and hanging, right? So. Let's play the stroke, but, but all you're going to do is, 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 is focus on, we'll recognize that the right is playing a particular pattern. Go ahead and play it. One, two, three, one, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Where is the downstroke in the left? Yeah. Um, in your calf. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Now put the left on the surface and put the right. It's good. Now put the left on the surface and the right. Switch it this way? Okay. Six. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, it starts with a down. Now, okay. Now, 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 go ahead and start it left now so that we're kind of duplicating the experiment. More precisely. Start, start with left hand lead. Okay. Watch your grip. You've gone, back to, you've gone back to your back finger plus sign grip just slightly. Really, that's what's happening. Right? Remember the channel? It's looking much better today based on this channel thing. I've come up with to help. Now stroke in the left. Remember how smooth it is and little it is? Yeah. Yeah, you can almost imagine you're making a note, but you're not. Two. That helps. One, two, three, one, two. Four, five, six. No. One. No, it's a downstroke. I'll, st I'll start with the left hand and I'll, I'll count that as one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five, stroke. Six. No, it's not a single stroke, it's just a throw. And it comes up real tiny, real smooth. Remember how little it was when you made a note? Don't point your first finger. I know it's a lot. One. Better. Don't come up so much like you just did. It's better. A tiny little something. Thing. Two. There. Okay, put both hands on the surface. Put the metronome on it. Let's just see. Two, three, four, five, six. You could, could play it that way. One. How about the dotted? How about the dotted um, quarter note equals forty? Thirty even. Well, one, two, three, four, five. That's cool. Two, three, four. One, 
two, four, five. So the metronome is in two. Half notes, yeah. What tempo is that, Kevin? 40. Oh, 40, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Six, the metronome is in double. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold on, let me, let me, let me set something here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, no. Oh, one, it's one, one, and four. Get the downstroke. Oh, yeah, I made a mistake. <laughs> four. One, two, three, four. Two, three. Is that correct there? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Before we land it between the metronome. Yeah, that's right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 I have to kind of yeah, have to wrap around that. One, two, three, four, five. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Make them smaller, like we just did in the alternating half. Six, one, two, three. You don't have to move nearly as much. This is the first turn. Four, five, six. I don't want your finger in the right. Five, six, one, two, three. Four, five, six, three, four. Pop the metronome up to uh, 48 and see what happens. 48, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Six. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Imagine it this way. Four, five, six. One, two, three. Good. Imagine it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, 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 We can get into roll strokes.
become another stroke. I'm adding more notes. Now I can play, see, it's just this. I can go, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, paradiddle, or I can play paradiddle, 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 ah, uh, ah, uh. We learn these motions and we just come right back to the floor right here okay so you don't need to rush this right now no, no. Might, you might be able to pop this up to or 48 which yeah. is full you can pop it up to 52 and to give yourself some time to think you know this right now isn't about speed it, it doesn't matter if you come back and you, if you come back and you're stopping up here and you're pointing your index finger right squeezing with the back fingers the whole thing is kind of for naught because we're missing the what's really important which is a subtlety okay all right so that stuff that seems like minutia don't blow it off no no not at all see how much better your grip is just stay there for a second see how, see how that feels right take a photograph of that right that is what we want to look like. That's where we spend most of our time. We're always coming back to that position with that grip. Just don't punch your first finger in the in the in the right. Go. Perfect. Don't move. Right. The, the, that it, we should bronze that, and you become a perfect statue. That's it. All right. I'm gonna turn this off. <laughs> 